Well, USFL Week 4 has concluded. Had a decent slate of games this week, you know. Uh, we got we to gotta talk, you know, how close these games have been. These games have been pretty close. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Did the uh, the timing rules work out? That that's one question that's been on everybody's minds, and I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, the timing rules and everything, you know, in the first and third quarters after an incompletion and stuff like that, try to keep the game at three hours. I think that worked out fine. What did work out fine was uh, trying to find the New Jersey Pittsburgh game on Peacock. Um, yeah, I, I do not understand the, the point of Peacock, but I mean, here we are. Uh, there's still like two more of those Peacock, ex Peacock exclusive games left to go. Uh, and the times have already been set before the season. So people complaining about, you know, you know, like uh, Philadelphia, Michigan being like a 10 p.m. Eastern start. That time was set before the season began. Y'all gotta go look back and stuff. Like the times for the games this year have been pretty much set uh, in all likelihood. And I don't know if they're gonna change too much over the next few weeks because there have been some flip flops. You know, like you know, Birmingham being flip flopped. You know, from one time slot to the uh, to the best time slot that's that's been available on Fox. You know. You know, like all, like all of the Birmingham games have been on Fox and NBC so far, so you know, it is what it is. But Philadelphia, Michigan, um, Case Cookies, he did all right. Um, he, he he did his thing. I think he played pretty good, but he was just being a little bit too reckless on the field at times. You know, could didn't slide at appropriate times. There were a couple of times where he didn't slide when he needed to, and you know. Channing Stribling picked off Shea Patterson twice, and you'd think Michigan would run it because the run was actually working, but instead, you know, it, it didn't work out for them, you know. Like, th there were multiple issues, you know, not just Shea Patterson's passing, but the kicking game, a punt got muffed, and the 21-yard field goal at the end of the game to, you know, try and get Michigan to W failed so miserably it doinked off the upright and it's just it's just the state of kicking in the USFL like this is this is horrendously bad you don't miss 21 yarders this is in Boise State Nevada back in what 2020 2010 this isn't this isn't that at all no sir no sir yeah it is what it is. Philadelphia gets the victory there. Um, New Jersey, Pittsburgh. Unfortunately for the Ballers, they are still winless. I'm, I'm thinking about you know just honestly being done watching the Ballers because this team is terrible. Um, Luis Perez, DeAndre Johnson. Instead of running the ball, you know they efficiently dispatch Pitt with the passing game. They combined for 200 yards passing. Darius Victor, Kevontae Turpin, they get TDs for the Generals. And I mean, I mean Pittsburgh just, they got to get something together. They got to get a win next week. If they don't get a win next week, it's going to be, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how, you know, I, 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 how I think this team will fare. Because I mean, again, you know, there's six weeks left of the season and, you know, you got to get wins now. You, if Pittsburgh doesn't start winning, it's it's gonna be it's just gonna be pain and misery. Like it's already pain and misery now, but you gotta win now. And I, I don't I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna I don't know if Pittsburgh is even gonna win a game, are they? I don't know. Tampa Bay Birmingham was the fireworks game and how fitting it was because there pretty much weren't any fireworks, you know what, sixteen ten, Birmingham beat Tampa Bay as the Stallions hold the Bandits to just 36 yards in the second half, 158 yards in total. Alex McGo got the start because Jamar Smith had a uh, corona probably, and there was one drive that was just absolutely beautiful. That's the type of football drive that you need right there, ladies and gentlemen, a nine-minute drive. McGo leading a nice drive like that, that is just beautiful. Beautiful stuff right there. In Tampa Bay, it's kind of unfortunate they lose, you know, you know the way that they lost, but they needed to get something going. And Tom and crew, you know, just haven't done 
as much as I thought they would, and it's it's a damn shame that they haven't. I, I don't understand. And then the game that just finished up about 30 to 40 minutes ago, Houston, New Orleans, uh, Mark Thompson was pretty much shut down. You know, Houston was able to tie it. You know, you know Houston's kicker's the only guy that's actually been doing pretty good, you know. You know, but unfortunately for Houston, New Orleans got the ball back with less than two minutes left to go. And despite Kyle Sloter, you know, missing some throws, he, he missed like a couple of bad throws. Like there was some throws that he was just missing today. And he, was, he was off, but he throws up a floater. I forgot who caught that game winning touchdown pass, but a floater. Sloter with a floater for the game winner. And New Orleans with another W. That, that's the type of stuff you like to see right there. And that is basically it for the USFL. Week number four and week five is coming on up. Uh, we got a Friday game next week. We got, I believe it's either one or two Saturday games and then one or two Sunday games. I'm not sure how the schedule is working out. I, I, I haven't looked at it again yet because I, I constantly am looking at my watch schedule to see you know, what I'm going to be doing you know, these weekends because, um, you know... <laughs> Uh, you know, things are winding down here on this channel for you know uh, the spring, like like springtime. You get to the dead of summer here on this channel. Yeah, there's not a lot here. So, um, in any case, it's my 25th birthday today. Uh, we'll be back later on tonight at like probably 9:30, 10 o'clock. To talk the college cross championship bracket, the NL playoffs, and you know if you do want to give me some happy birthday wishes, please do. Also, you know, give me some money. I need some birthday money, but that's neither here nor there. How did y'all feel about week four of the USFL? Did you like it? Did you not? And you know what? What do you think needs to happen? You know the next couple weeks of the USFL. What do you think needs to happen? And TV ratings, don't even worry about TV ratings. As long as the USFL is getting a billion people to watch, you know, in this day and age of cord cutting and streaming, you know, a billion's all you really need, you know, on, a, on one of the big four, you know. But in any case, I'll see you all later on tonight around 9, 30, 10 to talk lacrosse. Take care.